Capricorn. Hello, this is Capricorn Tigress of Astrology, A Look Inside. Uh, also, Adrian Igo is my name. And I am coming to you today because, well, you know, I got myself together today and I thought I am going to make the videos for the month of October early and I'm going to do that. But as I sit here, my Taurus moon feels ever lazy and I realize that I don't know if I even have the energy or desire to do that today. So I'm going to follow my whatever that energy is today and if that energy says to make those videos, I'll stop and make the videos. But my husband's at an engagement party and I had some free time, so I thought I would make this video. And all I'm gonna do right now is just basically give a update on where the planets are for the next 28 days or so because I'm not sure I'm gonna make the videos for everyone, so I'll just make a quick video and just go over this for everybody real quick. So. You know, the last big aspect that we had was on the 12th of September, and that's when Jupiter was sextile Pisces and Scorpio. Um, and, um, well, Jupiter was sextile Pluto, excuse me, at 18 degrees of Scorpio and 18 degrees of Capricorn. And so they made a, a, a gorgeous sextile. And I actually feel like I felt that because as a Capricorn, I took the time to make um, ads and videos and you know pictures and things for my my promotions and I really feel like I took advantage of that Jupiter Pisces in my case that Scorpio falls in my 10th house of career and the Capricorn is right in my first house so uh, the urge to actually just make videos and put myself out there was huge that day the, and so that could be affecting people right now. You might feel highly creative. And another thing that um, is really creative um, is that on the 20th, Saturn is going to quintile Neptune. And uh, this will be happening at 2 degrees of Capricorn, 2 degrees and 43 seconds of Capricorn, Saturn, and 14 degrees and 43 seconds of Pisces in Neptune, or Neptune in Pisces. So it's a very creative um, aspect. It always deals with talent of some kind. But in this case, you're, it's gonna deal with like intuitive abilities and understanding intuitively like different religious things. It's a, it really, you're gonna feel like the religious philosophies and, and understanding all the different things. Perhaps someone like myself, who is an astrologer, may find that people are more open to astrology on the 20th of September um, than at other times, because it does seem like people are going to be open to religious philosophies and spiritual val uh, values and, and that type of thing. Also, the ability to understand um, the different uh, values and philosophies and dogma that everyone has. Everyone is different, you know? Um, and so it's going to be interesting how that really plays out in in the world because I'm actually thinking about running an ad for an astrology and you know there are a lot of people who have a great deal of dogma um, in their religions against astrology and so there is a natural fear um, uh, in me uh, about running that ad and and just about exposing myself in in general as an astrologer but this gives me hope if I plan it right maybe the responses will be very positive because Saturn quintile Neptune is very good for that intuitive understanding um, of religious you know thought patterns and dogma and um, the spiritualities and things like that and I, I just think people are going to be more open to that right now on the 21st of September, Mercury is going to enter Libra. So we're going to go from that influence of Virgo, which is Earth, and um, we're going to go into Libra. So I, I always look at this time when it comes into the end of September, Libra is the harvest time. Like it's actually, you know, the finishing up of the harvest, that late September. So Mercury enters Libra at 1139 
p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 1.39 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. And um, it's going to put the emphasis of thought and communication into the area of relationships. It's the natural sign that rules relationships and things like marriage and partnerships and things like that. I could see that, um, and, and it's ruled by Venus naturally. So I can see how um, there might be a lot of talk, uh, love talk, <laughs> talk of love and relationships and marriage and stuff like that. On the 22nd of September, the sun enters Libra. So if thinking about it wasn't enough, now the sun or all of the emphasis and the actual, um, you know, the energy, the force is going to be in Libra as of the 22nd of September goes into Libra at 9.54 um, p.m. and that's 12.54 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, Libra rules areas such as partnerships. Um, diplomacy is also, you know, a lot of uh, ambassadors and diplomats and people like that are known for having a lot of uh, Libra emphasis because they're very good with people and they're very good with mediation and arbitration and diplomacy and things like, you know, um, being an ambassador in politics and foreign affairs and stuff like that. So use um, this Libra uh, time for enhancing your partnerships. Even business partnerships are, uh, are under this Libra sun. So we have 30 days to really sure up those business partnerships. And so I would take advantage of this time. Now, the crazy thing is on the 24th of September, which is just two days later, the moon is going to be full in the sign of Aries. And Aries opposes Libra. So do you see how there's going to be that sun, moon opposition? And Libra ought, always rules the scales, you know, that weighing back and forth. There might be a lot of amb ambiguity, like ambiguous things happening where, you know, one thing was planned or was supposed to happen and it doesn't happen quite that way or you know someone is standing in the middle of a decision but they're not making a firm decision and I I, I hope this really is not going to play out in the elections because I know a lot of the elections are all happening in you know the month of September and um, I'm just wondering if that ambiguity is that you know that wavering that weighing of the scales i'm not sure that the whole not sure feeling is there one of the things i always say about um libras is that libras lie i don't think they lie to be mean or lie to hurt anyone libras lie because they don't like confrontation they really want things to be pleasant and um, they like to party. They like to have a good time. Libras are the good time people. And so I really think that this is going to be a period where people are thinking about having a good time and they're going to have a good time. And you might find yourself getting into relationships and new partnerships and all kind of things like that. This full moon in Aries, however, is going to emphasize that opposite side. So you no, know, it, again, it's partnerships, no matter how you look at it, whether, you know, whether... It, you know, you're the partner or the partner is on the other side, but I do see where that could be a real issue and it is going to be an actual opposition on the 24th. So do be aware, especially if you're a Libra, an Aries, a Capricorn, or a Cancer, that this day could be, um, it could actually be explosive because, you know, Aries is a very fiery place for the moon to be and um, I don't want to say childish but I can see them having fights Aries like to fight so please be aware of this okay and yeah now on the 25th Chiron uh, is going to retrograde into Pisces uh, you know it retrogrades into Pisces and Chiron into Pisces just makes I, I made a video <laughs> about this somewhere 
in one of my videos for September, but Chiron and Pisces just makes me think of somebody crying in their drink. Just, you know, they're sad. Please be aware that Chiron is entering Pisces be on the 25th because you might suddenly feel that sadness. Um, it's Chiron is the wounded healer and Pisces tends to get real sad at times and it's it can be a real problem because old pains and hurts that you might have thought were gone or that were healed may like old wounds reopen and it could be painful especially when it comes to money and so be aware of this and prepare for this and I just realized as I'm doing this reading that I have Pisces Jupiter in the second house of money I need to make sure my daughter um, helps me with, <laughs> with, with what she needs to help me with before the 25th make sure nothing bad happens now on the 30th of September uh, Pluto goes direct and that is I oh, I'm so excited <laughs> I'm so excited. Pluto finally goes direct. I, I, I can't explain this. I've got Pluto in the first house, transiting the first house right now. And it, when Pluto stopped going direct, I stopped dancing the way. I mean, I dance, but I'm not as hardcore as I was. I was hitting it hard when it was moving forward. And, uh, you know, when it slowed up, I slowed up. And so I'm hoping that when it goes direct, that I get back on track, you know, get back in my grind, get back on the grind. Because Pluto in the first house is power, but I have not felt that power. <laughs> the opposite of power, right, is just me just sitting around not doing what I'm supposed to do. So you might feel that when the on the 30th, that you're like your power comes back. You might feel like you're you're empowered in some way and Pluto is the sign of transformation so it can really make huge sweeping changes wherever it falls in your chart so just be aware that that Pluto in Capricorn is going direct and so that what wherever it is in your horoscope you're it's going Pluto's going to do whatever Pluto's going to do wherever it falls in your horoscope so on October 5th Venus goes retrograde <clears throat> and I've made videos about this but we've been in the pre retrograde shadow of Venus going retrograde ever since the beginning of September I think the 2nd of September and yeah on the 2nd of September and so it's really been affecting uh, it, or could have been affecting some possible relationships and you know and I, I caution people not to get into the relationship until after the entire retrograde is over which is November 9th, uh, 15th but you know for some who you meet someone and especially with all this leaper coming be aware that I just feel that there's going to probably be relationships started under this retrograde and then when it's over in November the relationships will probably die when the retrograde goes forward and so that retrograde is going to happen on the 5th of October at 3.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6.05 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And it's going to be happening at 10 degrees and 50 seconds of Scorpio. And, um, you know, it is a retrograde, so be, be cautious of that. On the 7th, Saturn is quincux, uh, the, the true node. And whenever there's a quincux or inconjunct, it's easier to say. <laughs> Those inconjuncts are great. I love them because it always rolls like talent. Some kind of like talent comes out. Some, some creativity of some kind. And a true node is always what we're supposed to be doing anyway. So when it, you know, when it's inconjunct that true node that way, Saturn. Saturn is the work we're supposed to do. What we're supposed to be working on. And a true note is what we're supposed to be doing. So those two, you know, in con that in conjunct right there, although they don't understand each other quite exactly, I think that it's going to be extremely creative. Extremely. That's October 7th. It happens at 11.06 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1.06 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Saturn is at 3 degrees of Capricorn. And Leo, the North Node, is at 3 degrees of Leo. Leo North Note. That is going to be amazing and I personally can see how that will affect my personal life. On the 8th of October, 
there's going to be a new moon in Libra at 15 degrees Libra. You know, I shouldn't celebrate, but I'm going to celebrate. You know why? Because that new moon is going to be falling up in, in, at the top of my chart. So maybe my career is going to happen. I'm so happy. But the new moon is going to be in Libra. So all of these things that I talked about earlier about relationships and partnerships and, you know, diplomacy and, you know, the ambivalence and ambiguity and, and, and weighing things and judging things and maybe things happening with the politics and all of that. October 8th. It's, it's really going to come to the fore again. For some reason, we're going to really, you know, it's all new. We have opportunities that day. Opportunities for new relationships. Opportunities for new partnerships. The new moon is actually a very good day to start things because... When you're at the new moon, you know, whatever you start around that period could possibly turn into something great by the time the full moon gets there. So I always say to start new projects around the new moon so that you can harvest or get your rewards at the full moon or, you know, to that effect. Start diets. Good to start at the new moon, um, especially diets at the new moon because it's at its lowest point. Good time. And it's, you know, it's new. So you're starting something new. You'll have a new, improved, you know, vigor and desire to get that, whatever that is done, done with that. I hope that's going to be a positive new moon for many people. And on the 9th, Mercury enters Scorpio. It happens at 8.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's going to make a big change in the way people think. Because thinking the way Libras think and the way Scorpios think are two different things altogether. I mean, Libras are people, people. They are going to be thinking about others, partners, parties even. I mean, they are very social. I had a brother who was a Libra and I used to call him the Pied Piper. He knew everybody. Everybody knew him. That's what Libras do. They're very good at diplomacy and very good ambassadors. They do it naturally. But Scorpio is different. Scorpio is a sign that is secretive and it is it likes to be alone actually and it likes to investigate. It likes things on its own terms. It's not so much willing to lie and please people just to have friends and stuff like that. So when Mercury goes into Scorpio, it's going to be a whole different vibe because we're getting closer to Scorpio season anyway. And you'll see that the mindset will change instead of that wavering or, you know, judging and not making a decision, you might find that people finally snap that day and make a decision. But Scorpios make a decision one way or another. Things are either black or white for Scorpios. They don't have a lot of gray. You know, they, they see the big picture. Almost like Capricorns. They're very cut and dry. Okay? So, anyway, that's just my little mini update for September to October. I will be working on the op October readings for the signs. I promise to do that in just a little while. I was going to do it today, but I admit to my laziness, I fess up. And so, <laughs> and it's because Jupiter is really still opposing my moon down in the fourth house. I have my natal moon in Taurus in the fourth house. That makes me inherently lazy and private. So, you know, Jupiter is opposing that in the 10th house right now. And it's telling me, get out, get out, get out and do what you need to do. And my lazy uh, Taurus moon is saying, no, I think I'll watch Netflix some more. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this. And if you see any Libra, or Libra, if you see any uh, horoscopes up for the month of October, October, that means I fought my laziness and I came through anyway. Otherwise, I'll see you the next time I make these videos. This is Capricorn Tigress, Adrian Igo, with Astrology A Look Inside. Much love and much light to everyone. Mwah. <laughs>